Admittedly, I should have made this video much sooner because the main topic of this video that I want to talk about, it occurred all the way back in September, but I there was certain things that I had to wait for in order to make this video, so yeah, that's why it took me this long to make a video on this. Before I go into this video, I wish to provide a context for those that are completely unaware. And I wish to say in advance that if you think that this story is stupid and idiotic and like I was I was an idiot for this, I agree. Just know that that I think this was a stupid thing that I shouldn't have done and I wish I never did it and I still regret it very much to this day even after I made it, I fixed things. In late 2019, I joined a Super Smash Bros. dedicated community on Twitter, known as the For Smash community. Now, a For Smash account is a Twitter account that wants to see a character from a video game appear in Super Smash Bros. as a playable fighter. So, like, for example, you know, Crash Bandicoot for Smash, Waluigi for Smash, you know, stuff like that. It was really big back when Ultimate was going around, but then after Ultimate ended, obviously, it stopped being a big popular thing. However, this happened all the way back in October of 2019, when Smash Ultimate's DLC span was still going on. I joined the community because I wanted to see a character from the Grand Theft Auto series join Super Smash Bros. Now, I am aware of the reasons as to why this was an unlikely thing that was never gonna happen. I get it. GTA is not popular in Japan. GTA is too mature for Smash, that sort of thing. But there were also reasons as to why I believed it could have happened. And I just wanted to see it happen because in addition to GTA being an iconic gaming franchise and, and that tying into the whole celebration of gaming thing that Smash Ultimate had, the, also GTA is just an important franchise for me. I have a lot of nostalgic memories of playing the games and I feel like I've just completely ruined those now because of my later actions. So I joined the community in late 2019, and I did basically just campaigned, you know, gave out ideas for, like, how a GTA character would work in Smash, you know, stuff like that. It was, it, it was fun to do. I interacted with a lot of different accounts. I remember we do, like, collaborations and whatever. It was just a fun thing to do, and it really got me into GTA again. It really, like, sparked interest in GTA for me again. I was interested in GTA again because of this campaign. And then throughout 2020 and 2021, I would get a lot of crap from Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive, the people behind the Grand Theft Auto series. I don't want to go into detail on like what I received specifically, but I did get a lot of like not very good things. A lot of a lot of stuff happened during that time. It was just a constant series of just unfortunate things just coming up left and right, and it greatly hindered my motivation for a GTA character in Smash. It all culminated in late 2021 when I was hit with a 1-2 combo punch of Sora from Kingdom Hearts making it into Smash Ultimate as the final DLC fighter and the GTA Trilogy remasters which the less said about them, the better, let's put it that way. I was severely depressed during that time, at least I thought I was. I was just really angry that I didn't get this these characters in a stupid fighting game, and I instead got a really bad remaster in its place. Throughout 2022, I would grow a bigger hatred towards this community of people. For some reason, my warped mind like hated these people, because I believe like, oh, they didn't help me, they didn't give me any support during this time, and I basically just, I, I hated these people at the time, and it's something that is just, you know, I, if, I, there's a small part of me that wants to like, laugh at this, laugh at the absurdity of this whole thing, and be like, yeah, guys, this is a f funny, stupid thing that I did, ha ha ha, you know, like, you know, self-deprecating humor and whatnot, but, like, the way I treated these people on some occasions, like, it prevents me from looking at this in a humorous way, and I only look back at this with guilt and regret over something as stupid as certain characters not making it into a fighting game. I made a huge 
mistake with this channel. I, I basically nearly ruined my YouTube career by doing this, but I made four videos. Yes, four videos talking about my experience in this community and why i was like oh these people didn't support me they don't care about me blah 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 they were just whiny as hell videos that i wish i never made again i'm not even able to like look at them as like a funny bad videos or anything like that because it just i feel nothing but regret watching these videos so i can't even like you know laugh at them and joke at them and be like yeah these are some really bad videos am i right guys i'm just unable to do that i'm embarrassed by these videos and i wish i never made them and then something happened in late July that made me realize that I did, I'm doing the wrong thing. While scrolling through Twitter one day, I came across a tweet from someone. I am not going to say the account that like posted this tweet out of respect for their privacy and whatnot. They basically tweeted out about the videos that I made, clowning on it essentially, talking about how they were stupid videos and whatnot. And I looked through the replies and most of them were like agreeing with me and immediately I received like a wake up call because this meant that like my YouTube career was like in jeopardy now. Like I couldn't care about the Twitter account. I couldn't care less about that old hunk of junk. But like this is like, like I love making videos and I instantly realized that like this thing that I'm passionate about making videos and whatnot, like that could have easily been ruined. My reputation could have easily been ruined. A, a lot of things could have been ruined. I know someone in the comments is going to be like, Oh, you only apologized and realized you were wrong after you got called out. Like, yo, I'm sorry. I need to go on a, a, a tangent. I hate whenever I go on, like, on YouTube or whatever, on, like, the internet. Whenever there's, like, some kind of, like, drama going on. And I see people be like, you know, someone does a bad thing. And then they apologize for it. And then it's like, oh, they're only apologizing because they got called out for doing the bad thing. Like, yeah, is that not how it works? When else am I supposed to apologize? I got called out for it. I realized I was doing the wrong thing. And I tried changing that. Like, what else am I supposed to do? And yeah, I get that apology videos have, like, a reputation for being insincere and whatnot. I get, I you know all the cliches, you know, the sigh at the beginning and, and whatnot. I know all the cliches. But then sometimes... Like, there's, like, sincere ones. There's, like, genuine ones. I'm sure they exist somewhere out there. Would you rather have me not realize that I was wrong? Would you rather have me just completely ignore it? Would you rather have this channel, the reputation of it, keep getting worse and worse? Would you rather have me still hate these people and not realize, like, I was in the wrong? Like, would you rather have me commit career by making more and more of these videos would you rather have me become like a lol cow or whatever anything like that it's like you like th that's what i thought like i didn't want that at all i have zero ill will towards the person that made that tweet because they made me realize my mistake they made me realize i was in the wrong it was a wake-up call a reality check i realized like i made a mistake and throughout august and september i just tried ever so hard to make things right i tried absolutely desperately to make things right with these people it was much harder than it had any right to be though primarily because of elon musk now i'm sure everyone watching this is aware of elon musk and his controversial ownership of twitter x whatever you want to call it but it still, Elon Musk made this a lot harder than it needed to be. This should have been a very simple thing, but I was unable to. I, I was very limited when it came to apologizing to these people because of Elon Musk. I couldn't be able to write down a twit longer apology. Now, a twit longer, for those who don't know, is basically it's you could just write down a tweet as long as you want. You could just write extremely long messages onto it. It's like a tweet that like you could just write down it's like as long as you want it to be it could be extremely long with zero limitations and i couldn't do that because i, I guess at some point elon made a change to twitter that made it so like you can't use twit longer anymore i have no idea but that's that that was out of the question i couldn't write down a twit longer or anything like that i tried dming these people i tried you know going into their dms wanting to type down you know hey i'm sorry i i regret everything that i did in the past you know treating y'all like shit over a stupid video game that sort of thing 
I tried doing that. I tried DMing them. I had to f***ing pay. There's a paywall. I had to subscribe to Twitter Blue in order to apologize to these people. I have no idea when they implemented this in. But it made me realize, like, I was, I was, I really f***ed up this time. I really f***ed up over something as stupid as a video game. It, I, I genuinely got scared that it was too late for me to fix things, to apologize. It was, it was too late. And I had to live, I would have to live with this forever. The regret of just all the sh that I did for nothing. Just the constant, you know, dragging these people down into my pity party of, like, the Rockstar game stuff that, like, didn't f***ing matter at all. Like, okay, yeah, the GTA Trilogy remasters were bad, but, like, who cares? Life goes on. Why should anyone in the world give a sh if the remasters turn out bad? The world would still be the same if they turned out good. Nothing of importance would be different if they turned out good or if they never existed at all. I was seriously depressed during this time. And I mean like actually genuinely depressed. Not like the whiny crap in late 2021. I mean like genuinely I felt miserable because of this. I just, I just started thinking like I was not a good person. You know, I thought about, like, my relationship with, like, friends and family and whatnot. You know, during this time, I remember going to, like, a family gathering. And it's like, everyone was like, you know, hey, there, me, you know, saying hi to me and whatnot. And it's just, in my head, I was just thinking, like, I shouldn't be with these people. I don't deserve to be with these people because I'm a terrible person. At least three separate occasions, I broke down into tears. I just had a mental breakdown crying to myself because it's just i felt so much regret over this entire thing the only way i could have been able to make things right was if i messaged these people but i couldn't do that without having to give my money to elon musk which is something that i did not want to do eventually though in september against my will i gave in i bought twitter blue I spent eight dollars. I figured, you know, I, I I'm gonna regret giving money away to Elon Musk, but you know what? At least it's for something good. At least it's for a good cause. I DM'd all of the people. There weren't a lot of people, like I think like six, seven people specifically. I DM'd that I all I dragged them into this bullshit for no reason it's very important for me to note that i wrote down two apology threads for these people the first one was like around early august shortly after i was called out and back when i was like whiny and whatever whenever i would have these like tantrums over this stupid thing i would at these people so they could see it and be like look what you guys did this is all your fault Ugh. You know, and I I did this like three times, these like tantrum things. I just did them three times and I did it this fourth time for a good cause this time for them to see the apology. Some of them saw it. They've forgiven me. So, you know, like at least, at least like it was a little, it was better than nothing. You know, it just like, at least we just, we, you know, we're, we're on good terms. Some, some of these people were on good terms with me. But eventually, though, later on into, like, September, I thought that that apology thread wasn't good enough. It didn't go into enough detail about how much I f***ing ruin everything with these people and how, like, idiotic my actions were. And so I had to go and write down another one. I had to write down a massive thread just apologizing to these people, going into detail about, like, why I shouldn't have treated these people the way that I did and, like, Oh, especially over something as stupid as a character not making it into a certain game. And then later into September, I bought Twitter Blue against my will, and I DM'd a lot of these people, at just sending them the apology thread, and letting them know that I, I regret the bullshit that I dragged them through all the way back then in like 2021 and 2022 some of them like acknowledged it forgave me some of them have not responded and i don't think they ever will respond because this was back in september and it's almost december but i just kind of have to accept that like i can't apologize to everyone but at least like at least for the most part i'm on good terms with these people i i don't have any intentions on using twitter i just 
I couldn't leave Twitter until I, like, apologized to these people and made them aware that I was sorry for my actions and I regret acting immature and whatnot over these, over this stupid thing, which I had succeeded in doing, mostly, thankfully. It was also kind of extra perfect as well because the day that I apologized to these people, the day that I was able to make things right with these people, it also happened to be on September 17th, 2023, which was the 10 year anniversary for Grand Theft Auto 5. So there was just kind of like an extra special feel for that whole thing. Like that night, I was just like, I, I was crying, but this time it was like tears of joy knowing that like it, there was still hope. It, it wasn't too late to change. Combined with just the idea that like this amazing game is now a full decade old. And like the combination of just the nostalgia playing it and the realization that like, like I'm getting old. It was just a lot of things that contributed to that. But it was a it was an amazing day for a lot of reasons. I just want there to be another Super Smash Bros. game for no other reason other than to just try again, you know, have a fresh start, go back to how things were in 2019 and 2020 and some parts of 2021. Just revert back to how things were, revert to like having it just normal, have a fun time campaigning it because everything that i did like the regret that i felt was so strong that on some occasions i just i was just against the idea of a gta character joining smash like i didn't want it to happen but then there was still a small part of me that wanted to see it happen and i didn't want to let this idea get ruined because of my past actions i didn't want the idea of like cj being in the same game with mario and minecraft steve and whatever i didn't want that to get ruined something that would make the internet f***ing explode something like second only to gta 6 i'd say and i didn't want to have it be ruined because of this i don't think it will happen if we get a smash 6 i highly doubt that it will happen but i just want to try again and just do the right thing but then there's another part of me that thinks like i should just leave it be and not acknowledge it you know like like, I've apologized to these people, and now we, like, part ways, and we just, we never speak to each other again, but at least it's not like we hate each other, you know, like, I don't hate them, and they don't hate me, nothing like that at all. I really ruined a lot of things. I, throughout this time, I felt very insecure about making videos. I felt very insecure about, like, the quality of my videos because of that tweet. I was genuinely scared that, like, these four videos would ruin everything. These four videos would just end my YouTube career just like that. Ruin something that I was just really passionate about. I have I, tons of video ideas in my head that would just all go to waste because of these four videos. I didn't want to risk, you know, harassment and whatnot over these four videos. I just did not want to risk that at all. I felt so much regret over everything that I did that I just, I didn't want to re-upload these videos and, like, make them public again and, what, and whatnot and, like, having it so that like people could watch it and be like yeah guys this is a this is a funny video that i made it's so stupid and over dramatic am i right guys am i right i'm complaining about stupid stuff that doesn't matter but i can't do that i just cannot do that at all i realize now that a lot of the stuff i've complained about with rockstar games in the past stuff that i've made videos about they don't matter at all they really don't matter. Like, yeah, it sucks that we got ninth gen versions of GTA 5 instead of GTA 6, but, like, guess what? It doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it sucks that, like, they're very bare bones. They have, like, almost no changes from the previous versions, but, again, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it sucks that the GTA trilogy got a really bad remaster, but it doesn't matter. Life goes on. You know what? I started playing the GTA Trilogy remasters around this time, and I'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying this, I don't even f***ing care, I, I don't hate them. I have not come across a single glitch playing them. I mean, to be fair, this is like in 2023 and whatnot, if I had played these back in 2021, back when they first came out, then yeah, for sure I would come across a lot of glitches, but playing them myself, I have not encountered any glitches at all. 
I don't like some of the graphical choices that they went with, but, like, that's really the only problem. And because I'm playing the Switch version, that means I have to deal with Joy-Con drift, which is a real pain in the ass. But, like, that's it, basically. Other than that, I've, I have zero problems at all. I don't hate the GTA Trilogy remasters. I know I'm gonna get a lot of backlash for this, but you know what? I don't give a f what people say you know yeah it does suck that red dead redemption instead of getting like a proper remaster or remake or whatever instead we just get a lazy bare bones port for the switch and the ps4 if we don't get like a remake remaster nothing like that it's just a bare bones port with zero differences from the original xbox 360 and ps3 versions of the game and like they they're charging you full price to play it like you gotta spend like 50 dollars for a bare bones port of a 13 year old game that does suck but guess what it doesn't matter it doesn't matter either and you know what once again i went ahead and i bought red dead redemption on the switch i don't even give a shit what people say i really don't care honestly if i could i would buy the ps4 version as well i don't even own a ps4 or a ps5 or anything like that there is literally no way for me to play this version of the game but i don't give a shit. i really don't care at all a lot of the stuff that i complained about with rockstar and take two interactive and whatever it didn't matter at all it's just stupid insignificant crap that i made a an unnecessarily big deal about I would say, like, to an extent, it was all justified, but I shouldn't have lashed out to the First Smash community over it. Like, that was where I made the mistake. Like, yeah, it was understandable to be mad at, like, Sora making it in as the final fighter instead of a GTA character combined with the GTA trilogy remasters coming out and being bad. But, like, that's not the First Smash community's fault. They couldn't have done anything about it. I treated it like it was their fault when I shouldn't have. I kept whining about how these people like wouldn't help me out, wouldn't give me any support when I should have done it myself. I expected it to be like they would come and help me out instead of like me going to them and asking for help and support and whatever. That was the mistake that I made. God, and this was like before Elon Musk bought Twitter, so like this was like before all of his bullshit. And I could have easily like gotten help from these people if I just went up to them instead of like having them come to me and I wouldn't have to deal with Elon's bullshit at all. I this is entirely my fault and I just I just I don't know why I did these things. I genuinely don't know why. I want to bring up a specific thing as well that I talked about in these videos that I have since taken down, I'm gonna bring up something. So back in June of this year, it was announced that a remake of Super Mario RPG would be made for the Switch, and there was a lot of people that was excited for this game, because one of the characters in the game, Gino, is like a massive request for Super Smash Bros. There are a lot of people that want to see this character in the Smash, even though this is like the only game that he ever appeared in. At the time, I had to question why this like irrelevant character that only appeared in one game, like if they had appeared, if this character appeared in a lot of other games from like Mario and whatever, then like that would be understandable. But no, this is the only game Gino appears in. So it just didn't make sense to me at all at the time. And so when it was announced that a remake was getting made, I, I immediately got angry because it was jealousy, that's why. Because the idea was that the Super Mario RPG remake would be coming out, it ends up being really good, and so like it increases whatever chances Geno has of joining Smash. And then you compare that to the GTA Trilogy remasters, where I genuinely believe that like the way that these games turned out basically ruined any chances of a GTA character joining Smash, just like that. And so I threw a massive hissy fit over this game. I, I, I hated this game at the time, and it's just, after apologizing to these people, after realizing that I was wrong, one of the things that I wanted to do, one of the amends that I wanted to do was buy the game myself. And yes, indeed, I went ahead and I bought the game. I bought the Mario RPG remake. I have yet to actually play it, but... I'm sure it is a good game. In in the event that I end up not liking the game, it'll probably just be like, it's not my kind of game, rather than it being like a terrible game or anything like that. It will certainly have nothing to do with this thing, this whole thing, that's for sure. I can assure you that. Finally, I want to go ahead and talk about um another big thing for this. Kingdom Hearts. 
So, as I've said numerous times before in this video, Sora, the main protagonist of Kingdom Hearts, was the final character to join Smash Bros. He was the final Smash Ultimate DLC fighter. And throughout early 2022, I grew really curious about what Kingdom Hearts was like, you know, and like, should I give it a proper chance? Should I just, you know, should I actually play it and see like, you know what, maybe Sora actually did deserve to be in Smash and whatnot, because I get that this was like a highly requested character. I get that like a lot of people wanted to see him in the game. I, I get that. I get that a lot of people were really happy for his inclusion and I just wanted to see, like, what was I missing out with this game. I wanted to see, like, what the big deal was with this game. So, I went ahead and I bought the first Kingdom Hearts on the PS2. And I would go and play it, and I f***ing hated it. I absolutely loathed this game. It wasn't just the For Smash stuff. There's just a lot of problems, genuine problems I have with this game. That I just, I just cannot stand this game at all. I'm gonna just, I know I'm gonna make more people angry by saying this, but, like, even though this for Smash stuff is, like, over and, like, you know, I've made peace with these people and whatnot, I still hate Kingdom Hearts. I refuse to play it again. I refuse to re-evaluate it and give it a second chance because there's a chance that if I play this game and I get exposed to, like, the problems I have with it, I'll end up, like, suffering a relapse of sorts. And then it's like, I go back to how I was before blindly hating on these people over something extremely stupid. Around the same time that I bought the first game, I also went ahead and bought Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3, just because I was really invested in seeing what this franchise was going to be like at the time. Earlier this year, I decided to play Kingdom Hearts 2 just because I was curious about what it was like, because I heard a lot of people say that this was a much better game than the first Kingdom Hearts, and it's like a really great game. I don't like Kingdom Hearts 2 either, but I don't hate it as much as the first game. The main problem that I have with it is just, it's it's really boring, and that's it. I only got like an hour into it before I decided, yeah, I'm not gonna play any more of this. This game is f***ing boring, I'm sorry. But I could see this game getting good. I've heard that, like, some people say, like, the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2 is boring, and then later on it becomes a really good game. So you know what? Maybe I could give Kingdom Hearts 2 another chance. Maybe I could reevaluate Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 1 is irredeemable dog sh** to me, though. I I'm sorry. I refuse to play it again, okay? There are redeeming qualities to Kingdom Hearts 1, but, like, just listen, okay? Gummy shit mini game. Enemy health bars that aren't visible by default, and you have to literally unlock the ability to make them visible. Unskippable cutscenes that you are forced to sit through every single time you want to try and beat a boss. I'm sorry, but I hate this game. It is one of the worst games I have ever played in my life, and I have zero shame in saying that. I have zero shame in saying that I like the GTA Trilogy Remaster more than Kingdom Hearts 1. I have zero f shame in saying that and i don't really care how many people get mad at me for saying that there's a small part of me that wants to like remake the videos on kingdom hearts one so i could go into more detail on why i think the game is bad but another part of me just wants to leave this be and just never touch it again I'm sure the other Kingdom Hearts games are good. I'm sure, like, you know, just because one game is bad, that doesn't mean the entire franchise is bad, even though the one game in question is literally the first game in the series. But I don't care. I'm just... I refuse to play this game again. I refuse to play Kingdom Hearts 1. It is one of the worst f***ing games I've ever played in my life. I'm sorry. I'm sure the other Kingdom Hearts games are good, but I, I refuse to play the first game. I refuse to replay it. It is an awful game. I have no problem with people that like it. I have zero problem. If there's anyone watching this that loves it, that, that's great. Good for you. I have zero problems with that. Keep liking the game. If you've never played Kingdom Hearts and like you're interested in playing it, then go for it. Form your own opinion on whether the game is good or bad. Don't just... I'm probably the last person in the world that you should get your opinions on Kingdom Hearts from. There are... If you, if you want to, like, look at reviews or whatever, there's tons of other people that I guarantee you, you could trust them more than you can trust me when it comes to talking about Kingdom Hearts 1, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and say that right there. So, to recap everything, I joined a Super Smash Bros. dedicated community 
on Twitter a few years ago, and as time went on, I would grow to hate these people for stuff that they didn't do at all, and they couldn't have done anything about it at all. And then I realized that I did a lot of really bad things, I realized what I was doing was wrong, I desperately tried to make things right with these people, and thankfully I succeeded in doing that for the most part, and now we're just like, you know, I just... I, I can't, I, even then, even though I, you know, everything is fine now and like everything is okay. I just, I still can't help but feel like, like this stuff shouldn't have happened in the first place. Like this whole thing could have been easily prevented, but it happened and it was completely my fault. Please do not comment down below talking about how like, oh, I'm innocent and whatever you, you did the, you, they, they're wrong. You're right. Like, don't say something like that. Just please. Uh, let me take accountability. Let me acknowledge th that I made a f huge mistake and then just we just move on from this, okay? This is a stupid thing. It was me being immature and bratty and whatever. Me acting like it was just me acting like a man child basically over something stupid. That's all that it was. And now I've realized that it was wrong. So like it's just I I'm just I just wish it never happened, but it did and it's it was completely my fault. I can't do anything about it. Please, if any of you use Twitter, if any of you have a Twitter account, just please support these people, okay? Give them as any sort of support, okay? If there's if there's a character that you want to see in a future Smash Bros. game, then just go onto, like, Twitter, see if there's a For Smash account dedicated to that character, and just support them, please. Just support them. Don't do it just because I tell you to. Do it because, like, you genuinely want to see this character in a future game and you want to like engage with people who also want to see this character so like if you if you want to see like rayman or whatever crash bandicoot in a future smash bros game there's tons of different accounts dedicated to like wanting to see rayman in smash or crash bandicoot in smash just support these people okay just support them like whatever they post retweet whatever they post follow them stuff like that you know engage with other people that also share the same interest that you have just just support these people please just support them please i'm just so happy that like this is all over and i just i even though the guilt that i feel of doing it in the first place that may never leave me at least like i know for a fact that like it's just it's over this whole thing it's done with and it's not happening it's it's done with i wanted to try and contact the person who made the original tweet but unfortunately they don't have their dms open at all so yeah there's not a chance for me to contact them but i just want to say to that person thank you for making me aware of my mistakes thank you for giving me that much needed reality check Again, I am going to keep this person anonymous because I don't want to, like, risk anyone going over and, like, harassing them over this whole thing. I just... Just please don't. I don't want to talk about this whole thing again. I don't think I'm ever going to make another video on, like, GTA or Kingdom Hearts or anything of that sort again. It's just... Never again will I talk about either one. I'm just... I'm just... More than anything else, I'm just... Hopeful for the future. You know, the fact that we're getting the a GTA 6 trailer, the first ever GTA 6 trailer in early December, very soon, it's like, it's, it, it's, it's, I feel hopeful for the first time in a very long time, I feel hopeful, I feel like, you know, better days are coming, I am sorry to the first Smash community for the immature brattiness of, of my whole thing, it's just a really stupid thing, that I did, dragging them down into whatever crap I was angry about with Rockstar, crap that didn't matter at all, and I'm sorry to everyone watching this as well, for being part of this as well, for, I, I wish I never made those four videos, I almost ruined my YouTube career because of those videos, and I just, I dragged y'all into something that was just really stupid, something that like, you all, y'all shouldn't have been a part of at all to begin with, y'all shouldn't have been a part of it, I can just, I just want to move on to, like, better things now. Maybe there's a very small chance I'll make a video talking about the GTA 6 trailer when that drops, but aside from that, I'm basically done with, you know, Rockstar videos and Kingdom Hearts videos and whatnot. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching this video. I really appreciate it if you watched it the whole way through. Th thank you. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.